Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films, and in today's video, I'm gonna be introducing you to C-stands and how to use them properly. C-stands are an absolutely outstanding tool. We have about six C-stands in our kit and they are incredibly versatile. Anytime I go reaching for a stand, most of the time I find it being a C-stand. They are that good. C-stands stand for Century Stand and they get their name from the company that invented them, Century Lighting. But I like to think that C-stands are also called Century Stands because they can do literally a hundred different things. So I have two C-stands in front of me. This one here is by Avenger Manfrotto, which is the leading European and Italian brand, and they're very, very common here in Australia. And I have a Matthews stand over here, which is the leading US brand. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to properly set up and use a C-stand, and along the way, I'll be showing you the subtle variances between these two major brands. So C-stands in general are a two-stage stand that have quite a bit of height in them. They're a very solid uh, stainless steel construction and they've got very thick steel piping at each stage in the stand. And most stands will also include a gobo or grip head as well as a gobo or grip head on a 40 inch or 20 inch arm. The main differences between these two stands are in the feet and in the grip heads. But apart from that, they're very, very similar and can be used interchangeably. So C-stands, when they've got the gobo heads or the grip heads attached, they're incredibly versatile. They can grip and mount a range of different lighting and gripping accessories. You can use it to mount up lights, flags, nets, cutters, steady cams, reflectors, boom pole holders, gel rolls, and a heap more. So in our exploration of C-stands, we're going to start at the base and we'll work our way up the stand. Now, C-stands have uh, the same three-legged construction across all the models, but how the C-stands actually lock and fold up changes between the Avenger model and the Matthews model. So I'm gonna show you both of those now. Both models of C-stand, they fold up just like this so that all of the legs sit together so that these can be stored flat. So they can either be held in a rack or you can lay them flat and transport them in a vehicle that way. Now with the Avenger brand, um, what you'll notice is that the top leg here, it can free spin, but it actually has some grooves that it can slot into. Uh, now there is a right and a wrong way to unfold these legs. So what you wanna do is you wanna leave the middle leg where it is, it's locked. And you wanna grab the bottom leg with your right hand and pull it to the right. And as you can hear there, it snaps into a groove. It's got a position and a spring in there that holds that in the right position. If you actually go the wrong way with it, it doesn't have a groove to lock into, it just free spins. So you wanna grab it, pull it to the right, and then that snaps into position. And then you take the top free spinning leg and turn it to the left. And that also has a position that that locks into. Tighten down the knob and your stand is ready to go. All right, so now let's have a look at the base of the Matthews stand. Now, as you can see, these fold up the same way so that they can lie flat. But the difference is, and this is my favorite feature of the, uh, the Matthews C stands, is when you turn them, they just lock into the correct place. It's so easy. And then when you unlock them again, they just fold up on their own. So that is a brilliant uh, design element there, and that's, it's the thing I like about the Matthews the most. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about also relates to the feet, it's how to stack C-stands. You often hear when it comes to Matthews C-stands that you should stack them over the middle leg, which is on the right-hand side. But what you'll notice with the Avengers C-stands is that the middle leg is actually on the left instead of the right. The rule is they still stack together and they're both compatible. But what you wanna do is you want to stack the big leg over the right hand leg. Now you can interchange these stands. You can stack um, Matthew stands with Avengers stands together, as long as you're stacking them over that right hand leg. Medium leg on Matthews, small leg on Avengers. So as you can see, when you do that, everything lines up beautifully. So you have all of your knobs lined up and out of the way of one another. There's a nice even space between the two stands and you can rack these up and have multiple C stands stacked together. So remember, big leg over the right hand leg. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to the base of C stands is that there are two types of stand base that you can get. The first is called a turtle base. And I don't have one of those here, but essentially what happens is with a turtle base, when you undo this knob here, you can remove the entire center column of the stand and you'll be left with a junior receiver. So you've got a light that has a junior pin. Uh, you can mount it directly into the base of the stand or you can get a junior to baby pin adapter, commonly known as a butt plug. And you can insert that and you can then put baby lights on there as well. And you can also get adapters that you can mount uh, tripod heads and things like that. So you can put cameras on the base of a turtle base. It's a very, very uh, useful design. This one here has a detachable leg. So if you undo this, you can actually slide the leg up and down. So this is called a sliding leg or a Rocky Mountain leg in the, uh, in the US, also commonly called a lazy leg here in Australia. So what this allows you to do is position the stand vertically on uneven ground. So you can lift the leg up and say you're working on stairs, for example, you can get the stand to the right position, lock that down, bag the leg and you're good to go. Your stand is still gonna be rock solid. You can now mount things on uneven terrain. So you've just got to decide when you're purchasing your C stands, what base you want, whether you want a turtle base design or one with a sliding leg. So the next thing I wanna talk about with these stands is the grip heads. Now, what I'm gonna say applies equally to the grip heads on the end of the gobo arms, as well as the grip heads that are mounted onto the top of the stand itself. They both have a slightly different design. So we'll start with the Avenger Manfrotto ones first. So the first thing you'll notice is that they've added this nice rubberized coating on the, uh, the handle of the grip head, which makes it really comfortable and easy to tighten and loosen. So the next thing you'll notice is this has different sized holes. So these are round holes on this particular model and you can see it's got a large one a medium one and then as we rotate the grip head you'll see that there's actually two smaller ones as well for smaller sized accessories now if we undo the handle here the next thing that we want to have a look at is that you'll notice that this has an alignment pin as well so this one is quite a short alignment pin and I wish it were a little bit longer because it doesn't take very much to have this basically spin freely. And what I've had uh, seen a lot of people do uh, when it comes back from hires or when it's being used by students and things like that, is that they'll actually clamp down on it with the alignment pin like this. And this can actually bend this screw here and warp the grip head itself. So it's really important to make sure that that alignment pin is always aligned correctly. So the next thing to have a look at is in between the head and the base here. So you'll actually see here that this has a perfectly smooth mounting point here. And it's got this little uh, plate here that kind of adds a little bit of grip and resistance. I think it's some sort of cork material or something like that. So that will allow you to get a fairly good grip on the head. But if you overload it, there is a chance that the head may start to slip because it hasn't got any teeth or anything to lock this into position. So now let's have a look at the Matthews head and see how it compares. So the first thing you'll notice is that they don't have that rubberized handle, but it is a very comfortable knob here. It fits into the hand really nicely. So even though it's entirely metal, uh, you're not gonna cut yourself or it doesn't bite you in any way when you turn it. Next thing you'll notice is it doesn't use round holes. It actually uses hexagonal holes. And what that does is that bites down really well on whatever it is that it's gripping, be that a flag or a net or some other kind of accessory. So that is a really nice feature. It has a really nice uh, solid hold, but it only has the two hole sizes. So it has a large one and a medium one. And you'll see as you rotate it that there are no other size options there. So that is a little bit more limited than the Avenger Man Frodo model. So one more thing that you will notice about the Matthews head is that instead of this being completely flat like the Avenger one, it's actually got two sets of teeth. So if I undo the grip head, move this out of the way, you'll see here that there are some teeth that are sandwiched here, and then there's this metal plate. And this is actually a really nice feature because what happens is that the teeth on either side will actually grip really nicely into that metal plate and give you a really, really secure hold without it being teeth on teeth so that you'd have to like ratchet that around. It can still slide when it's fairly tight. So you don't need to fully loosen and separate this to be able to rotate it. You can still rotate it freely, but it will have a really, really firm hold because of those teeth 
and that metal plate. And this is something that I really like because with this design, if you were to overload the stand, you put too much on the end of an arm or too much weight on it, there's less chance of this slipping and rotating than with the Avenger style head. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is how to raise and lower the stand when it's under load. So what you wanna be aware of is you always want to start from the top stage and work your way down. So if I were to start at the bottom and lift this up, and this was up, say, a meter in the air, I'd then having to raise it from, I'd have to be working from this section here, which is probably gonna be up above my head. I'd be lifting things up high in an unsafe and compromised position. So what you always want to do is you always want to start at the top stage, raise it up to where you want, lock it off, and then if you need to go even higher, then you're in a really comfortable position to raise that stand up to the height that you need it. The next thing I want to talk about is handing over or carrying a C-stand. What you don't want to do is lift or hand over a C-stand like this with your finger or thumb between the arm and the stand itself. Because if someone else comes in or you grab it like this and squeeze, if your hand's in the wrong spot, you're gonna jam your fingers in there and that's not very safe. So you always wanna hold it with your hands around both the arm and the stand itself. So the next thing I wanna talk about is, is how to load up a C-stand, how to put a load on an arm that might be extended. So maybe you're extending out a net or a flag or something like that. Now, wherever you position that load, you always want it to be over the big leg. The big leg is the one that's gonna bear all the weight. Now, if you were to say, swing a flag out this way, for example, and you're in between the legs or over the small leg, then there's not much there to hold that C-stand from toppling over. Whereas if it's over the big leg and you put weight on it, it's not gonna go anywhere. So that's really, really important. Always put the load over the large leg and you wanna always make sure you put your sandbag on your large leg as well. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is called the right hand rule. If we're positioning our stand and we've got it facing the direction that we want to position our load, so we're gonna put our load over our big leg, then we want to align our knuckles here from the grip heads on the right hand side. And the reason that we do that, is let's extend the arm out. So we're gonna clamp something in the head here is when you put pressure on the arm here and the knuckles on the right hand side, that's actually going to tighten by having a load on it. Whereas if I flip this over and we're gripping something on this side now, we have a look. Now our knuckles are on the left hand side of the direction of our load. And what happens is if you put weight on that, that actually loosens the grip head with the downward pressure. And that's something that you don't want. Then your load is gonna come down on top of someone but much more likelihood of having an accident. So you always wanna to remember to position your load with the knuckles on the right hand side. All right, so now I'm gonna show you three common ways to rig up a C-stand. So I'm gonna start with a flag. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decide where we want to position our flag. So I want to position it about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align my stand, big leg in the direction of the load. I'm gonna to adhere to the right hand rule. So I'm gonna swing my stand out in that direction there, and that we have got a shot bag on the base of the big legs. You can put that in there, and you can position this however you want. If you need to extend it out that way, you can have it up vertically, you can rotate it. So we've got our arm extended out over the big leg, so that's not going anywhere. So that's our flag. And our last configuration that I wanna show you is using the C-stand as a light stand. So if I remove the grip head entirely, we're left with a baby pin. So we can now use it as a light stand. So this is useful for medium sized lights. So if you've got like a 2K tungsten or something like that, you need to get up quite high. This is a nice sturdy stand base for a light like that. So just basically lock the light in and you're good to go. So the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to C stands is because these stands are so solid, you don't have to be afraid of mixing in other pieces of gripping gear. So what I've got here is I've got a super clamp attached to a magic arm, and then I have another grip head on the other end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig up a silk to help soften the output from this LED light. So what I can do is I can simply clamp the super clamp onto the base of the stand like that, and that's got a really nice firm hold. I can position my uh, magic arm where I need it, 
And remember to adhere to the right hand rule and to have the load above the big leg of the C-stand. Lock that off so that that's in position. And now I'm gonna grab my net. So with the net, all I can do now is simply slot that into the grip head, position that where I need it, like that. And we're good to go. We've got something rigged up to the stand itself that will help soften that light beautifully. So there you have it guys, that is how you can use C-Stand in combination with other pieces of gripping equipment. So there you have it guys, that is how you can set up and operate a C-Stand correctly, as well as a couple of common uses and configurations that you can apply to your sets. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you liked it, make sure to let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials just like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We put out new videos every single week. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one. And we have about six stands in our arsenal. Uh, <laughs> just, just one more, I'll get it, I'll get it. I'm just gonna get it. I'm gonna actually get what I've written. I'm gonna do that one more time for safety. Wow.